What do we want? Safe staffing. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safe staffing. When do we want it? Now. Hey, my name is Anna Fernandez. I am the nurse representative for the Mission Bay Emergency Department. They are staffing us below our acuity, which is um, unacceptable. They're, sta they're breaking ratios across all campuses. So units that are supposed to be staffed at three to one are often staffed at higher numbers, four to one, sometimes even five to one. Have there been fi complaints filed? Many complaints, many ADOs, many uh, meetings with management, many requests to cease and desist on these unsafe staffing levels. But why aren't they being enforced? And not enough pressure, I guess. We're here to put on the pressure. It's unacceptable. What about Cal OSHA? Are we are filing Cal OSHA complaints and waiting on responses. Um, our patients deserve better. Have there been any physical inspections by Cal OSHA? Uh, not to my knowledge yet, but Kalosha is very busy and we're expecting them to come. Do you think they should hire more inspectors? There are only less than 200 inspectors for 18 million workers. It, the writing's on the wall. My concerns are this. We don't have a backup plan. We have units that don't have re re reinforcements trained. So if a unit goes down, meaning if a, a unit becomes infected and it spreads, there is no plan. There is no plan in place to back that unit. And it would be so dangerous. Um, we we get some reports. It takes contract tracing to find out what where the you know where the outbreak came from. But yes, we they we demand every week that they meet with us and talk to us about where these um, outbreaks are coming from and how it's being passed. The cuts speak for themselves. You know, we we are seeing cuts to our social workers at a time when people's psychosocial needs are skyrocketing. It's the wrong time for this. I work in the emergency department and the amount of um, behavioral health and psychiatric complaints is skyrocketing. People are, as expected, people are suffering and people are needing more help, not less. We would love it if you'd call Gavin Newsom, um, write an email to the UC Regents, speak out, support us. We're here to support you. We want to do what's best for our patients and families. I'm Matt Steven. I'm a physician assistant uh, here at UC. I've been here for a few years now, and I'm a steward with UPDI. Uh, we represent a pretty wide range of classifications and jobs, uh, physician assistants, SLPs, audiologists, animal techs, um, audiovisual tech, IT workers. There's about 10,000 of us across the state, and I think CNA is just a constant inspiration to a lot of us within UPDI, and we're here in support of the action with the California Nurses Assistant. Association. We're really here just to say that never have nurses mattered more. You know, we've got this global pandemic, thousands of people getting ill every day with a surge that's coming down the horizon. And nurses stepped up. Uh, nurses stepped up back in March when we thought that this pandemic was going to hit the Bay Area and they continue to step up now. They're advocating for more resources for our patients, um, for our staff, for our hospital. Um, this, this in turn will lead to better outcomes. Uh, it impacts a lot of lives, and, and uh, as a PA, I know firsthand um, how much having a well-staffed, uh, a resourced nursing department or unit matters. Um, and uh, you know, I've been continually inspired by the California Nurses Association, and that's why we're out here to support them. They say they can't afford you. What's the justification for cutting staff in the middle of the pandemic? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I, I, I I've, I've spent a lot of time pondering that question. Why? Uh, you know, in a moment where uh, our, we're in significant demand, where we matter a lot, why they're uh, pivoting to go even leaner uh, than we already have been. Uh, my concern is that in this moment where they need us, um, what are they going to do when they don't, when they feel they don't need us anymore? I don't know how they justify it, and, and hopefully some of these collective actions out here will reset sort of this conversation here and, and to let uh, the regents know that you know we need nurses, and now's not the time to cut nurses or cut support staff. The actions seem to imply that maybe there's a little bit more of a profit motive. That's what I hear. They're fine with every staff member here getting infected and dying because they've been uh, negligent. Yeah. They've been negligent. They've joined the American hospital system that just buys equipment just in time, so they didn't have a stockpile. And they try to blame the supply chains, and they blame everybody but themselves. Uh, they gaslighted all our staff, saying that this was just like the flu, that you don't need an N95. Guess where we are now? Now everybody admits it's airborne, 
and we need the full protection that we've been fighting for from the beginning. He's trying to tell us not to worry. And that's what happened in February. They didn't, the nurses were surprised and they, they act like this is just another day. You don't need any extra training. You don't need any extra information. And, but we've had to pass laws to keep them accountable. California Nurses Association got a law passed that all hospitals in California are required to keep a three month supply of unexpired PPE. We have to do this because they won't do the right thing on their own. I am Agnes Juarez. I'm a hospital unit service coordinator a 10 cardiovascular thoracic unit and also the recording secretary for AFSME 32.99. 32.99 stands united with CNA. Your fight is our fight. Our members work side by side with RNs. In our unit, I see how short staffing affects not only nurses but all of us. Intensivity, we are TCU unit. 3 is to 1 ratio 3 nurses and one 3 patient and one pa and one nurse but when we are short staff 3 or 2 nurses have four patients sometimes they pull one break relief or no break relief at all until 11 p.m. and we'll go home at 5:30 so OT has to be approved too Yet, during all of this, we try to take care of our patients, especially you nurses, no matter what. Nurses are on their feet running from place to place the whole shift. At 8 South alone, where we saw the COVID outbreak here at UCSF, three of our members are infected, impacted by their family and their family st stayed positive afterwards. And guess what? Eight South was short stopped that day. This took when the when this thing took place. PCAs have multiple patients. They had to run around from room to room to make sure that they delivered the best patient care possible. But even following the precautions outlined by the management, the short staffing caused an increase in exposure to multiple patients, resulting in this outbreak. This is not okay. Workers deserve better. Patients deserve better. So UCSF need to do better. We demand sta safe staffing now. My name is Christina Amoroso. I work on 14 Long a Medicine Unit. And um, since the shutdown ended, we have seen continual intentional short staffing on our floor. Um, UC is trying to save money. In an email, they even described it that they hemorrhaged money, yet they're retaining their good appearance by doing lots of goodwill things around the city while treating their nurses very badly before the surge has even begun. At work, I wear a happy face around, but then I decided to get a grumpy face made because I'm not happy anymore. The staffing is horrible. I wonder if they're preparing us for poor staffing in the future. <laughs> Are they breaking us down? I don't know. It's so surprising because the amount of money that they're saving by short staffing us is pennies compared to some of the goodwill efforts that they have undertaken, and I'm glad they did to allow us to test the entire city, send groups of medical teams to places that need us most, but I have no idea. It's My name is Gabriela Diaz. I am representing nurses, not just on my unit, but hospital-wide, that are tired, overworked, mentally, emotionally, and physically exhausted because of the issues that you don't see during this global pandemic. While we initially thought that the greatest impact of the pandemic would be the deadly nature of this virus and the influx of patients we would see on our unit, we were wrong. Once our hospital worked to put protocols into place, we quickly went from canceling open heart, canceling all elective open heart surgeries to keeping every bed on our unit full. Regardless of the lack of nursing staff, the ancillary support that was available to realistically manage the medical needs of these patients. We felt so invisible. We were knowingly and chronically understaffed for months. High risk surgeries kept getting scheduled when we already had a unit full of chronically and critically ill patients, sometimes requiring two to three nurses to manage their life support machines and medical and their medical therapies. Our leadership knew that we were understaffed and, and not safely staffed, but the workload persisted. 
My nurses stayed focused. They managed the increasing, increasing demands placed on them. We were placed in situations that risked and sometimes compromised patient safety. And they worked lots and lots and lots of overtime to, to make up for the staffing deficiencies. And all of these issues were caused by the hiring freezes, the budget cuts, the hospi a hospital that's focusing and prioritizing recouping financial losses over patient safety and maintaining a healthy workforce. My nurses and I have gone through all the avenues necessary to raise awareness to our concerns. We've signed and organized petitions and presented them to management. We have organized meetings with upper management and leadership to express our concerns and give them concrete examples of how patient safety is being compromised daily. We thought that maybe our leadership didn't understand the, var the variable nuances of, that are involved in the highly specialized care we provide. And we expressed how these variables are exacerbated to critical issues when we're having staffing issues and budget cuts. The thing is now they know. And we provided a list of reasonable actions and attentions that our unit needed. We were denied all the support and all the safety networks and resources we asked for because the budget couldn't accommodate for it. Uh, did our hospital leadership cause the pandemic? No. Is our hospital system uniquely impacted by the broad economic aftermath? No. Uh, but there are mitigating solutions that can relieve the stressors placed on our nurses, our ancillary staff, but most importantly, our patients. We're here because we don't want to see our patients harmed. We want to provide the best possible health outcomes. As a pediatric nurse, I want to have time to hold your crying baby and to play with your toddler and help them meet their developmental milestones. But we can't do that the way staffing has been and the way budget cuts have affected our patients. And we are here really just to advocate for our patients and their needs. I'm Jamil Kavakungan, and as Anna mentioned, a proud nurse rep for the hybrid MedSearch COVID unit at Parnassus and the Professional Practice Committee co-chair for UCSF CNA. When the hospital reopened for our peak COVID patient load, or after our peak COVID patient load, around May or June, that's when things went downhill. More patients came to the hospital, yet there were less nurses and nurse assistants to help. This fluctuation occurred in part because core staff here at Parnassus were helping at Mount Zion. So you see how the same number of staff covering two main campuses, and we were outnumbered by the amount of patients coming in. When this happens, you have units out of ratio, meaning a nurse has more patients to take care of than normal. This has happened continuously and dangerously in the ERs, ICUs, and step-down units at UCSF. This is dangerous because one nurse cannot take sole care of multiple patients with critical conditions. In med surge units like my own, nurses have taken care of five patients instead of four because of being understaffed. Just last night, I worked 15 hours so I could help night shift when they were short a nurse. In fact, there have been three days in the past week where I was asked to come to work on my day off. In my five years at UCSF, I have never seen so much overtime being offered or seen so many shifts missing a nurse. It is unbelievable to be this understaffed. But it's not just nurses. There have also been shifts where we are short PCAs or patient care assistants. Our PCAs are proud members of AFSME and they are unfortunately being overworked as well. They are usually caring for eight or so patients, but being one PCA short leaves them in the care of 16 patients, meaning double their normal workload. This has happened on the night shift of my unit where a PCA position was removed entirely, leaving two PCAs for 31 patients. But imagine if there's one or no PCA to help, this has happened on multiple units and it needs to end ASAP. For months, we have filed assignment despite objection forms or ADOs to make management aware of the dangers of short staffing. We went from filing 30 ADOs in May to averaging over 100 in the following months. We have been in constant meetings with UCSF management and though travelers are said to be hired, 
We need career staff who will want to stay and invest in UCSF's high standard of care. In this current state, how can nurses and PCAs provide adequate care if we're made to do more work with less staff? At Mount Zion, nurse reps have voiced concern that there is no transport team, no unit secretary, no PCA, or even a tech to monitor dangerous oxygen levels or heart rhythms of patients. This has left all the responsibilities on the nurses, putting their license at risk and putting patients' lives at risk. Shame on UC for letting these situations be the reality of our staff and patients every day. This profits over patients business model is simply not appropriate for a hospital. Our patients differ in their medical, social, and emotional needs. They are not in a factory where they can be put back together in a certain amount of time. We are only human, so nurses cannot fill every role, or else it can and has been leading the staff burnout. We want to give safe, high quality care to our patients. So we need UCSF management to staff us based on acuity, not by budget. It's in our contract. Let this press conference serve as a reminder to UC that nurses will always fight for what's best for our patients. We fought for PPE, continue to fight for testing, and we stand here again saying that enough is enough. The delays in patient care and increased staff fatigue is just not safe nor satisfactory for both parties. As Anna said, my name is Ashley Burnin. I'm a registered nurse with UCSF Medical Center, and I work in the float pool, which is a pool of nurses dedicated to floating to whatever unit is short that day. We go to all units around all facilities. We go to critical care, PACU, emergency department, the COVID units, etc. We are in heavy demand these days. We're here today to urge UCSF to improve poor staffing conditions that our hardworking employees and vulnerable high acuity patients have been suffering for months. Since the beginning of this pandemic, UCSF has made major cutbacks in order to prevent financial losses at the cost of decreased patient safety and lowered quality of care. Despite these monetary losses, UCSF still accrues billions of dollars in profit and can absolutely afford to provide adequate staffing. Especially given the national climate, COVID cases and deaths reaching record numbers, this is all the more reason to bolster our staffing now before what has happened elsewhere happens here and our hospitals and staff are overwhelmed by severely ill patients. We are proud to do the work we do, but we need adequate staff and resources to provide, sa to provide care safely and competently. All we are asking is that UCSF invest a portion of their profit toward these means. Nurses and other healthcare workers are overextended, burnt out, and pushed to the brink, always forced to do more and work harder with fewer resources. If this continues, UCSF will lose more employees, patient outcomes will suffer, and the downward spiral will continue. UCSF has a reputation for, for providing the best care to our patients, but this reputation is severely in jeopardy as our medical center continues to make choices that place profits over patients. Our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, cousins, friends, family members, community members, these are the people we are responsible for during some of their most vulnerable moments, and we work so hard to nurse them back to health. If only our patients, community members, and city leaders knew what goes on behind these closed doors, they would be appalled at UCSF's consistent decisions that unnecessarily put our patients and staff at risk in order uh, in order to um, profit. We do not ask for much, and this battle is not only ours. Nurses and healthcare workers across the country are pushing and fighting for adequate staff and resources to safely care for the vulnerable humans that come to our facilities. We are demanding UCSF hire more staff to keep our patients and employees safe from harm and to help prevent the transmission of this airborne virus. We do not want to fight a war with no army, no weapons, and no armor. UCSF has the ability to provide all of the above, and we are demanding they do so. What do we want? Safe staffing. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safe staffing. When do we want it? Now.